Today at the Zach Lift Factory, we're going to be showing you step by step how to install your Zach Lift removable towing unit, or RTU. The truck we're working on today is a Western Star with a 320 inch wheelbase and has been double framed. The first thing we're going to start with is removing the rear cross member, then we'll be modifying the rear airbag shell. We're going to remove all the bolts first. Uh, this one here was uh, more of a custom truck and we ended up having to cut it out because it is manufactured in with the frame. Now we'll be modifying the rear airbag shelf so the Zach lift can set further towards the rear end of your truck. Pre-manufactured a template here and we'll be scribing that onto the rear airbag shelf. This will give us an indication on where we need to cut. We're protecting our airbags because we're running an oxyacetylene torch and we don't want to damage the bags or any of the electrical. We'll be removing about a four to five inch section out of this. And really you want this to be about 18 inches wide to accommodate the Zach lift. Now that we have the section removed, we're going to grind it and prep it for weld. Make sure all your paint's removed. And then we'll mate our gusset in. Next, we'll tack our template into place, making sure we have a proper fit. We're using 045 hardwire, although many brands of stick will be okay. Make sure to weld top and bottom on the gusset. During the welding stage, it's important to disconnect the batteries of your truck. Now that we have the piece welded in, we'll prep it and then paint it. This is what the finished product looks like. Our cross member is going over the top of our airbags. So we're disconnecting them and then we'll reroute them around the cross member again. We're using our airbag brackets for pre-existing holes in the frame to mount our cross member. Now the cross member you'll receive tacked, so you'll have to cut your tacks first and you will have to trim a certain length off of your cross member, probably around two inches depending on your truck. Next we're transferring layout onto the cross member ends so we can drill these. Typically here we'll use an oversized 5 8 drill. That'll give you a little broom in case there's an error in your drilling. The top of the bracket which holds the rear cross member you'll want to drill all the way through. There'll be two holes top and bottom. And then you'll also have two holes that go through the frame. Install your brackets and snug down the bolts. It's best to leave one side just hand tight. On this particular truck, we've tacked the nuts to the rear cross member itself to make it easier for us to torque the bolts on the outside of the frame. Now we're going to position our cross member. You'll angle the rear cross member towards the rear end of your truck. This allows clearance for the tilt cylinder. Once we have it in place, we'll scribe the rear cross member and take it back over to drill. All these steps can be done with a hand drill. Now we're going to drill 5 8 holes through the rear cross member. It'll be two on each side all the way through the rear cross member. Now we're just doing a final fit up. and putting the bolts through. You'll put your bolts through from the top. Just in case anything ever comes loose, they'll stay in place. Now we're tightening everything down. Make sure when you're finished, to double check all your bolts and make sure they're tight. We're 
We're putting a protective coating over the air lines just to make sure they don't suffer from any abrasion. Now we're getting ready to put the RTU beam on. It's important when you install this to make sure that it's level and balanced. The beam itself weighs about 900 to 1100 pounds. We've unlocked the fifth wheel plate so the kingpin can go into the receiver. You'll also want to make sure your fifth wheel plate is unlocked so it can slide forward and backward when positioning your Zach lift. Now we have our RTU beam locked in and positioned on the truck. We're checking the beam for level and typically we like it nose down towards the cab of the truck about two degrees. Now we're using a degreeing wheel and a level to determine strike interferences at the rear of the truck. We do this by putting the face of the level on the pivot pin and see if the lower heel strikes anything. You'll have your level tilted 7 to 10 degrees towards the rear end of the truck and if you do run into a strike interference, you'll want to move your fifth wheel beam back to the rear of the truck. Next, we'll be installing our rear frame tabs. These are located at the rear of the beam on the passenger and driver's side. Once you have them in position, Lightly snug them up with a sledgehammer and then torque down the bolts. These frame tabs keep the RTU from lifting off the tail of your truck. We'll position the fifth wheel beam to where it's centered on the tail of your truck. We measure the gap on the rear feet and split the difference. You'll find three bolt holes on the rear of the RTU feet. These are located passenger and driver's side. You run these in just till they're snug. This is just to keep the RTU from walking side to side. Once they're snug, you'll set the jam nuts and tighten them, noting that your reveal is equal. Now we'll install our strut arms. The final stage to securing your RTU beam to your tractor, we'll start by mounting our strut arm over a pre-existing pin on the front of the fifth wheel beam. Next we'll insert our strut pin. The bottom of the pin should be slightly angled towards the cab of the tractor. This can run up to a 45 degree angle. Next we'll be installing our frame tabs. We do this first by removing four bolts out of the frame, typically these are around your cross member, four to the fifth wheel plate. We use these holes and scribe them to the frame tab. Now that we have our frame tabs drilled, we're gonna be bolting them to the frame. We're using four 5 8 grade eight bolts. And we just snug these up till they're hand tight. Now we'll install our strut mount over a pin located at the front of the Zach lift. Then we'll insert our strut mount and you'll want the bottom of it slightly forward towards the cab of the tractor. We'll adjust the strut with a knurled knob on the top of the strut tower. This will give us our height and once our height is achieved we'll insert our frame tab pin. Again you'll want to do this on both sides of your RTU and all these just have to be hand tight. The load of the Zach lift itself will put tension on these nuts and bolts.
Now your RTU is secured to the frame of your tractor. Next, we'll be installing our lower tilt cylinder. It's best to do this before you have the Zach lift in place. We start by removing the pin underneath the beam towards the rear of the tractor. We're using a forklift to position the tilt cylinder. We're now lining up the height and inserting our pin. This is a 403. On a 303, you'll have a step down bushing on this pin itself. Once in place, put cotter keys through both sides and bend to make sure the pin stays retained. Next, you're ready to install your Zach lift. You'll notice there's two witness marks on one side and one on the other. You'll want to make sure these are lined up when you pin your Zach lift. And now we're pinning our Zach lift on. Now you'll drop your bolts through. These do not have washers on them. And then tighten. Now we're ready to pin our tilt cylinder to the lower part of the Zach lift. We leave a snap ring on one side of the pin and then we tap it in with a hammer. Now we'll put our snap ring on the opposite side of the pin. For safety reasons, make sure your flip over latch is in place before lowering your lifting device. Now that we have our Zach lift securely in place, we're ready to move on to the installation of toolboxes. The toolboxes are an optional feature. We first start by loosening up the saddle clamp, and then we'll position our toolboxes. The saddle clamp has four bolt holes, the toolbox has three. This allows for height adjustment. Now we'll make sure we have plenty of height between the bottom of our toolboxes and the top of the tires. This will help when adding fenders. If you live in a climate where you'll be putting chains on your truck, make sure to have plenty of clearance between the fenders and tires. There's three bolt holes on each end of your toolboxes. Make sure those are in place and tightened. The toolbox on the driver's side has a fork bracket. The toolbox on the passenger side holds your valve body. Now that our toolboxes are in place, we're ready to start the plumbing. We've plugged our pigtail from the tractor to the fifth wheel beam. Now we're ready to install tail lights. You'll use the same mounting point that you use for installing your toolboxes. We'll install the tail light bracket holding the tail lights. We'll install this over a tab on the RTU. Connect your wires. Make sure your tail light bracket is securely bolted. And then you'll use self tapping screws to marry the two pieces together. After your tail lights are assembled, make sure they're working properly. The Zach Lift Toolbox comes standard with LED lighting. First, you'll need to ground your valve. You'll take the green grounding wire from your beam and connect it to a bolt on the valve body. When reconnecting, you'll torque this bolt down to 12 and a half foot pound. To connect the LED lighting in your toolboxes, first, you'll pull the wiring loom from your RTU beam, locating the two black wires. You will splice those together and then crimp them in a buck connector. After that, you'll take your red wire and brown wire, splice those together, put them in the opposite side of your buck connector and crimp. This will create the circuit for your LED lights. On this section, we'll be going over the plumbing of your Zach lift. This valve is located in the toolbox. On the back of the toolbox, 
there's a bulkhead plate. That will be connecting all of our hydraulic hoses too. We start by connecting our pressure. This hose comes from your pump. And then we'll be connecting our return line. This runs directly to your hydraulic tank. It's important to start your plumbing at the bottom of your bulkhead plate. You'll connect your hoses to the properly labeled fittings. The bottom row is typically your optional features, such as your winches and stiff legs. The next two rows up are for your lift, lower, and tilt. On your pressure side of your bulkhead plate, you'll have your 8 and 2 fitting. This controls your lift and fold. The middle section, your 7 and 3 fittings, will be your extend and retract. On your return line side of the bulkhead plate, you'll have your 6 and 4 fitting. This goes to your tilt cylinder. This valve head plate has the additional option of a winch, which is labeled T and B for top and bottom. Now that we have our bulkhead plate plumbed, we'll start running the hoses to our cylinders. Now we'll be connecting our lower tilt cylinder. These cylinders have been pressure tested at the factory, so they will have fluid in them. When undoing the caps, expect to have some pressure build up. Now we'll connect our 90 degree elbows. These are for the four and six lines off the valve section. You will now connect the two 90 degree fittings to your cylinder. There will be a tall fitting and a short fitting. The short fitting is for your number four supply line. The tall fitting is for your number six return line. When you've completed hooking up your tilt cylinder, You'll then move to your extend cylinder. You'll run from your bulkhead fitting on the back of your toolboxes to the bulkhead fittings underneath your beam. These are located on the driver's side and passenger side. The lower horizontal cylinder will have a cap on it. When you remove this cap, it's a good idea to have a drip tray handy. Now we're going to connect our swivel fittings to our lower horizontal. The number three hose will be on the passenger side. This is your pressure. Your number seven hose is gonna be on your driver's side. This is your return. An additional feature you can add to your Zach lift are stiff legs. We have 25,000 pound and 38,000 pound stiff legs. These are the 38,000 pound stiff legs. When positioning them, you'll want to make sure they're in a neutral position so the bolts line up easier. Next, you'll connect the lower two bolts on the back of the stiff legs to your RTU beam. The next step is to secure the top of your stiff legs to your RTU beam. There are three bolts on the front and four located in the back. You'll only be hand tightening up to this point. The reason we only hand tighten is to make sure we can line all of our bolt holes up. The next step will be torquing everything down. Now that we have our stiff legs installed, we'll be plumbing them. We first start by removing the safety caps. Next, we'll install our fittings. There's two on each leg, a pressure and return. On the driver's side, the return is on the outside of the leg. The extension is on the inside. On the passenger side, the extend is on the outside of the truck and the return is on the inside. Next, we're gonna connect our pigtail. We've connected the pigtail to the front of our beam. This wire extends all the way through the RTU, and now we're going to finish our final connection. This wire is pre-installed on the beam. From here, you're just connecting it to your stiff leg. There's already mounting holes in the leg themselves, and you'll just bolt it in. Next, we're going to install our tractor-trailer airlines. 
The beam comes factory with three air fittings. The bottom fitting is for pneumatic tools. The top two air lines are for your tractor and trailer. The bottom one is a quarter inch line, the top two are three eighths. You'll want to snug up your fittings. And the next thing you'll do is install your lines. The bottom line is a quarter inch line and the top two are half inch. And just make sure they're secure in your quick disconnects. This customer has chosen the additional option of having a 30,000 pound winch. The winch itself comes spooled with half inch cable, 200 feet long. Now that we have everything hooked up, we're just doing a basic function test with the Zach lift. At this point, you'll want to inspect for hydraulic leaks to make sure all your fittings are tight. On our function test, we just make sure the Zach lift goes through its full motion. Once your horizontal is all the way up, flip over your safety latch. This concludes the installation of the Zach Lift removable towing unit. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please call the number below.